Oh, howdy, folks. Welcome to Retsu Talk, episode 49. We are continuing with our great adventures in Dungeon World land. So we've got our DM 100 Hogs Agree. Hello. We've got Slow Beef slash Romero. That's correct. We have Ironica slash Samuel. 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 And Chip slash Carl. Hi. All right, so um, let's go over what changed since last episode first. I had everyone level up to level two because that's fun. So let's go left to right and what to do for your level up. Uh, starting with Carl. Um, so my, I just added one to my intelligence, so the modifier is plus two now. And I also got the underdog thing. Uh, so when I'm outnumbered, I have plus one armor because uh, I'm getting hit a lot. <laughs> <laughs> They like hitting you for some reason. Uh, yeah. Okay. I also increased my second, uh, one of my secondary tributes, uh, but in my case, that's charisma. So that's now at a plus two. And I took the move uh, in the nick of time. When I need to get somewhere quickly, roll decks. And I, on a success, I get there just in the nick of time. All right, yeah, slow beef. Uh, I added one to Constitution, so it's 16 and I have a modifier, a plus two, I believe. That's how that works. And I want to add the ability um, Merciless, which gives me an extra 1d4 of damage. That's good. And remember, you get an extra HP as well because you increase Con. That is that is right. Um, I think I think my max is really 25, which would bring it to 26. Yes. And I think I have 22 where I left off. Does that go up too? Uh. Just add one to your current HP if it went up. Yeah. You got it. Yep, okay, it did. But you're so. still damaged. You have not healed. Right, so I'm at 23 now, out of 26. All right, and Beatus, what did you do? I added one point to dexterity, so that gives me 16 total. And now I've got a modifier of two, so now I'm a wily crazy mage. And I gave myself the battle mage ability, which gives me some new uh, perks to choose from when I cast spells. Oh, like what? Uh, they are called Close, Area, and the one that appeals to me the most, Messy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. And also Piercing 2, an upgrade from Piercing 1. Yeah. All right, so um, who would like to uh, go over what happened last time, just for anyone who doesn't remember? It's been a month. Anyone? Well, there uh, was a big controversy with rope climbing. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we were a, uh, a minotaur charged at us at one point. Then no. we went to a ziggurat and then brought a golem that was powered by uh, racism to life. <laughs> that's uh, yeah, that's basically it. Okay. All right. Anything else My anyone bad. wants to add? <laughs> um, I uh, we were in a, a big room uh, where I think a bunch of snake people were worshiping something unbeknownst to us, and we murdered them and. Uh, we we're looking for a, 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 a an icon or a totem uh, of a woman with a, an octopus for a head. Is that if I remember? But it's all gold and jewelry. Oh it's, yeah, it's close enough. Pretty it's, awesome. Yeah, that's good. I I look. I like to fight. That's my thing. I, don't <laughs> mm, I got okay. all my teeth punched out. And I think my jaw's broken. So um, after last session, when Bohan animated an entire room through the power of racism, uh, you all had to flee that room as it fell apart around you, and as you get out into the nearest hallway, everything just collapses behind you as everything shakes apart. So, um, you're pretty deep in the temple now, and you've kind of blocked off the way back. So, as you all go forward, you don't really find the many more traps, <clears throat> and eventually you find yourselves come to, like, just the hallway ends in a room, in a door that it's open, and it's just pitch black inside there. You just can't see anything. It's, it, it's like... There's light outside the door, and then it just, like, wall of blackness. Um, hmm. well, oh, uh, I'm sorry, who, who gets to go? Or do a- we anyone can do anything. All right, um, well, I have my adventuring pack, so let's start this nice and boring and say maybe I have another torch in here somewhere or some kind of... I thing. could light the pack on fire and use it as a light. You know what, why don't you just light your own shit on fire and not worry about me, okay? How does that sound? <laughs> okay. All right, this is a nice pack, I think. Um, yeah, I'll I'll light up a, I'll pull out a, well, I'll, can I pull out a lantern? Um, 
I say torch, not lantern. All right, then. I'll, I'll pull out a torch. All right, then... so you strike that torch up, and uh, as you just kind of push your hand into through the doorway, it does give off light, but it's, oh. like, being dulled a lot just by the room itself. You... Uh, 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 Vohan, I think this is magic. Do you have a thing that can unmagic it? Like, you may, you're getting, like, maybe a three-foot radius of light around you, and that's about it. So it's like the room itself is draining the light rather than the torch itself being insufficiently powerful. Yeah, the torch is still burning just as brightly as it looked like before. It just It's not really penetrating the darkness. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. My, my uh, statement came out shaky because at this point, uh, Samuel is using the darkness to cover that he's vomiting in the corner. After that, that bloodbath he witnessed. <laughs> <laughs> so, like I said, you can see a little bit, but it's like just a couple feet in front of you, and you don't see anything in the room as of yet because you can't see very far. Thankfully, well, what if I use magic to illuminate something rather and see if that uh, yeah causes anything different from just using technology? You can attempt to do that, yes. All right, so I'll just, you know, light my hand on fire and hold it out in front of me and shine light brightly like a crazy diamond. Okay. You know, Bohan, you, you could have meant maybe been a little more proactive and did this before I blew the torch. Well, you were all about your adventure pack. I didn't want to, you know, take away your thunder. We didn't want right, this thanks. to be another rope situation. Go well, ahead and uh... use cast a spell then. <laughs> See, this Bohan. is a 2d6, correct? Yep, plus you're in. Plus two? Okay. Okay, so... Did that go through? I think that... Oh, yeah, eight? Yeah, eight. So choose your downsides there. Downsides, downsides. One let's, downside, you don't even know what your downsides are. Let's just say are. it doesn't last very long. Okay, you gotta pick two. Oh, uh... It doesn't last long, and... It either works much more or much less than I want it to. Alright, um... Preferably more. As you cast it, it puts out about the same amount of light as Romero's torch does. You have been shown up by a simple torch. <laughs> might, you're getting light, but it's just like three feet of radius of light around you. That's about it. I spit on the torch. <laughs> I, um, I, I suggest maybe we stand some distance apart so we're at least maximizing. Yeah, maybe that makes like, sense. You know, mm -hmm. I will uh, take a torch from my adventuring gear as well. Me Got too. That down to four uses left. Okay. All right. So y'all have a, a little bit of radius light around you. Uh, as you walk into the room, you're all just radiating light, and it kind of goes away. If any of you get far enough apart where you can't, your light source aren't touching anymore, you can't see each other. Oh. So you I gotta see. stay close together, otherwise you just kind of vanish. I'm okay with that. In the darkness. So um, as you go in, uh, some about. 10, 15 feet in front of the door, you find a pedestal, just like a simple stone mm -hmm. block with a hole on the top of it. And uh, if you keep moving forward in the room, you don't really see anything else yet. It just seems like empty room. Mm. Okay. Uh, I want to I want to check out the pedestal specifically because it right. is a feature that you mentioned. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> You're Go. good at this, ironically. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Played before, bro? It's, uh, you know when something's shiny in Resident Evil? Mm. Yeah. That's that's uh, something the DM describes, basically. I see. Gotcha. Go ahead and give me a discern realities, then. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. That's that's the wisdom one, right? Yes. Okay. Shit. <laughs> Minus one. I got a five. You don't know. You know what's a block of a hole in it. The hole is like... <laughs> you said that was a block hole. So I know what a pedestal a reality. is. <laughs> it's, the hole is like about the size of, say, a quarter. Or okay. a piece. <laughs> All right. And it's on top of the block. Pedestal I, thing. I'm going to so, stick a quarter in it. I, I'm doing a jerk-off oh. motion while he's explaining. <laughs> so a, a roll of five is basically the equivalent of... You guys see this, right? Yeah, five <laughs> is like, uh, I don't know fucking shit, whatever. <laughs> um... Okay, do you, you see something a coin in there? Or is... Yeah, I totally want to stick a coin in there. Maybe, maybe right. I can get a, a candy bar. I don't know. Go ahead, and you want you going to try to do that? Yes. All right, um, roll me a d6. Okay. <laughs> six. <laughs> that, that, if you threw that and it bounces out, then it's two. 
All right, <laughs> you take two damage as the coin is forced to be ejected from the hole and hits you in the face. All the right. coin took two damage? <laughs> it was going very fast. It's like oh a gosh. bullet. Does it leave, like, an imprint on his forehead? Yes, there's, like, the seal of the whatever empire you live in, like, pressed in there. Oh, Good man. thing I didn't put Can my... Can you replace uh, Samuel in our party with the coin? <laughs> I I am so happy I didn't put my sword in like I wanted to originally. Well, your sword wouldn't fit. It's not oh. that big. I did uh, awesome back there, man. It, I mean, like, fr in from the, the section, If someone I mean, wants to roll a discern realities about that, I may give you more information. <laughs> Well, After we know seeing a, this new information here. We know it's a force field of some kind. Um, well, I, I don't know if anyone else wants to do that, but I have an idea. I think it right. might have realized that my quarter was a slug, and it didn't want to give me the candy bar. <laughs> I'll, just, I'll just give you that. You get the feeling that maybe something goes in this hole, but that was not the thing that should go in it. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't think... Did, we didn't get anything from that altar. Yeah, that's right. Stuff, what do right? we have... We didn't get any like plot items, right? Or did we? We've, um, I think we've only. Oh, got the wand! With us. Oh, the wand! Ooh, yeah. Hey. Oh yeah, hey. the thing I'm holding. You gonna put the uh, the rod? Yeah, I'm gonna yes. strut up to that thing and look all fancy. So fancy and fancy. I'm just gonna like quickly like grab my slowly put the rod in. Don't just throw <laughs> it in or anything and just slam I know it thing gently. I know what I've invited. With the hole and slide it in. All right. Uh, as you do that, uh, suddenly the top of it just burst into light, and the whole room is illuminated. Uh, this room is about 50 foot feet long by, like, 20 feet wide. Can I just interrupt you and say, oh, for fuck's sake, and throw the torch? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. And um, there is a second pedestal, much more bigger and ornate, about 20 feet ahead of you. There's always a smaller pedestal inside. And then the far wall is just, like, smooth blank stone. There's not any seams. just, like, one solid block of, like, glistening white stone. Um, the light from that uh, rod you put in there is only going f towards the end of the room. Behind it, it's still completely black. Oh, so pick up the torch. Then. Yeah. yeah. So, so the second pass <laughs> you see, there's nothing on it. But if you look past it, the shadow it's casting on the back wall mm -hmm. is, it looks very like woman with a tentacle head shaped shadow. Oh. Ah. Yeah. Okay. So what do you do? I want to throw... I don't want to touch it. I want to throw something at where the shadow would be. like Not a coin. No, I'm just kidding. Go ahead. I'm, right. I'll use the coin. Screw you. <laughs> Why don't you just pat around, you know, minimize your risk. What are you going to throw at it? Uh, I'm, I don't know. The coin wouldn't have enough weight. I'm going to throw uh, my, my rapier at it. Ah. Okay. okay, and sort of knock off the apparently invisible idol from the large podium. All right, uh, give me a volley for that then. This is all right, and that one's plus dex, so I'm yes. I should be good at that. Nine. I'm reasonably right. good at that. Okay, so what happens when you throw your rapier is when it gets about two feet away from the edge of the pedestal, uh, the like the air flashes and it goes ricocheting off in a ram direction, forcing not towards you. Okay, but still in the light, hopefully. Yes. Okay. It's, it's just in there. You can go pick it up. I'll, I'll retrieve that, and, uh... <laughs> and now we know not to touch it. You're and, welcome. Um, have, okay. Have any of you walked ahead of that uh, podium yet with the rod in it? Well, you have, because you went and got your sword. Yeah. Has anyone else? Yeah. Mm-mm. All right. When when you walk when you go to fetch your sword, you see a rather clear shadow of yourself on the far wall. Okay. Mm. All right. So wait, if I'm understanding, like he walked in a location where the light would normally cast the shadow, right? Yes. But so imagine, like, you know, like those. Uh, it's like you're doing hand puppets on the wall, except I... it's your whole body. I know how light works. I'm, yeah. I'm aware of the science of optics. I'm, I'm saying... Oh, <laughs> Romero's not that dumb. Yeah, so he went, He tried to go where the shadow would be would be being cast from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where there's I'm, nothing, and it, and it was, like, forcefully, like, blocked from doing so and knocked away. Hmm. It forced him with his body and not... It was not his body, it was just a sword. I think I see. Yeah. Um, well, I cast a vote. Tell me what you guys think of this. Maybe we should 
kind of explore more of the darkened areas of the room and see if there's anything else in here. Hmm. Um. Well, okay. Just. Well, I mean, if you don't want to do it, I'm, I'm not like I'm the leader. I'm just gonna point out that that vomit there in the corner was definitely there before we got here. That's all. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I mean, I looking for more shit to kill. It's been a while. But, you know, <laughs> hey, whatever, okay? <laughs> my 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 plans though, don't work out apparently. So, fuck okay. it. So you're going to poke around the darkness? I thought we I don't know. You tell you guys tell me uh to what's his name again? Solaire? No, that's Dark Souls. Um, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. The name's uh, on the pogs, dude. <laughs> I know, I'm joking. I'm kidding. Uh as I check the pogs. Um <laughs> uh I don't know. I guess if no one has any better idea, let's just poke around the darkness. Hmm. But if, if, if anyone has a better idea, please, you know. Let's I'm... poke around the darkness, gosh. If I take the rod out of the thing, does the light go away? Yes, immediately. Okay. Like, as soon as it comes out, just everything goes black again. Okay, ah! so I'll leave the rod in there for the time being. Oh, oof. I forgot my nightlight at home. So, y y you poke around the darkness, um... Is it just you, Romero, that's doing it, or is everyone doing it? Okay. I, I, I thought everyone, yeah, just so we keep track of each other. All right. I want each of you to roll me 2d6. But, okay. Uh, but, sorry, no where modifier? Are... No modifier. I'm just, sorry, just to where, see what happens. Where are the pogs? Uh, go down to the left a little bit, okay. below the mushroom. Oh, I see it. I see it. Got it. Thank you. Um, 2d6, oh, no. you said? Hmm. Okay. Um, Ahem. While... Ooh, that's not good. Okay, you know who uh, the real dashing hero is. Aronicus here. and Slowbeef don't find anything, but uh, <laughs> Beatus and Chip, as you're walking around, you each hear a soft click as you step oh. on a small button on the ground. Oh. And as you do this, uh, you see a, f a shadowy figure come in along the edge of from the edge of the room, like appear, like nothing's cast a shadow. Just, it's just on the wall, and just kind of stands there. Looking around, it's just kind of like humanoid. Mm. It's got like spikes on it and stuff, but so it looks like a silhouette of a person. Yes, except there's no person there that would be casting a shadow. Right. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to ask them a question. Uh, I want to just speak to the shadow and ask uh, what they need. Um, what where you ask this question from? You still in the darkness? You're gonna walk. What, what up are we? The, the Boy Scouts? What are you talking about? I have a I plan. Thought we're, we're we're here for a totem. All right. <laughs> Maybe he'll just um, get in my hand back, ready to throw some fire at it. I'm here some for a philanthropy mission. <laughs> no, go ahead. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I'll be in the darkness when I when I ask this. Okay. Do um, you need me to hold your torch? Does not seem to acknowledge you whatsoever. Okay, and if I I'll say I'll shoot it from, fire at it then from the Good light, plan. then all right. Um, as you step in the light and uh, your shadow is cast on the wall, it notices your shadow and it moves towards it and looks like it's just gonna punch your shadow. Oh, oh. I get it. This oh is, man, I've seen this in a video game somewhere. Um, <laughs> oh, sorry, I've heard a bard talk about this. Um, <laughs> So that, what are you going to do? It is looking. It is menacing you. I I think attack it, like to make your shadow hit it. Does that make sense? Sorry, I'm a fighter. I don't. I didn't learn English very well. I don't know. Maybe it might. Well, I mean, I'm telling him that he's the one. I. I'm well, anyway, Salazar. Uh, it is looking like its shadow is about to attack your shadow. All right, I want to use do? my parry move. All right, I'm going to parry it with the shadow of my blade. Uh, with an eleven, haha! -ha. You, you do so. Oh, nice. All right. So, what does that move let you? I'm not. I'm not looking at your sheet. Right. Uh, I get to choose two from the list. I take no damage, and I uh, lock blades with it, keeping its full attention. Okay. Um, you have done so. Uh, while you're doing this, a second shadow comes in from the other side of the room on your other side and starts walking towards you. Hi uh, guys, I've got one. <laughs> all right, okay. Um, I, ugh. all right. I guess I'm gonna have to try to quickly figure out how to position myself such that I my silhouette is there, you know, and not hitting anyone else, right? And 
Uh, yes, th- think of all your, all, your, all your bodies now in a 2D plane. Oh, that's what oh, I'm oh. doing. What if you were closer so your shadow was larger? Hey, good work? idea. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to I'm going to try that. And then uh I am I am going to give a big overhand <laughs> swing. Okay? Toward it like I'm like a fucking monster, you know, just like <laughs> I'm the I'm I'm the giant monster. I'm I I will admit I am thinking asylum demon right now, but whatever. All right, okay. go ahead and try to do that then. Give me a hack and slash. What is that? Uh, two d six. It's always two d six. Yeah, and then okay, so that's a nine. Um, I like to think that there, uh, do I, R- Romero's inscription, like on his family crest, is "I am a giant monster." <laughs> <laughs> that's actually what I say to myself when I wake up every day. As I do my my exercises, you're good enough. Listening. You're smart enough, and tug on it. I am a giant monster. When I'm doing chest presses from like a dead ox or something that I've killed. <laughs> okay, um, so go ahead and roll me your damage. Okay, uh, is that another two d six and then plus a? No, that, your damage is your your damage die plus whatever is going to it. So for you, I think it'd be one d eight plus one d four because yeah, can, uh... yeah. I think is that right? Four. Yes. Okay. Well, all right, better than nothing, I guess. All right, um, you hit it well, but yeah. you feel like it just absorbs the blow. Like you did not beat its armor mm-hmm. at all. So you, you hit it, but you didn't do enough damage. And it uh, kind of does it clang off, kind of. Yeah, it just kind of bounces back. Yeah, yeah. Got and it. You, your your arms actually bounce back like you hit something yeah, in that's real life. My, yeah. So uh, as this happens, it just uh, rears back and socks you. And since you're so big, you're a big target. And uh, go ahead and roll me a d6 plus 1. Roll 1d6 plus 1? Yes. Uh, oh, shit. Oh. Uh, that, so does that's, take, that's... It does take your arm into account, but you just get, like, a full-body chill as it hits you. You feel, like, bad. <laughs> Why? It got me in the balls, right? Because I'm so big. Yes. Okay. Exactly. The and, shadow balls. Yeah, the shadow balls. So um, that takes uh, 7 damage off me? or It uh, does. Or, or, or wait, well, with, da- with armor. Uh, you, you get to take your armor off that. I think I have one armor, so that's six it hit before, and I had 23, so now I have 17. Yes. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Uh, do I have to do anything, by the way, to make my HP that? Uh, you can just... Here, I'll uh, take care of it. You click on the little orb, and it can change it. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Sorry. 17. Yeah. Bam. There you go. Oh, you got it for me. Yep. All right. All right. Uh, so the other two guys, Samuel is currently blocked, blocked blade with a shadow man. Romero's got punched in the balls by a shadow man. He's kind of reeling. What are you guys doing? Hmm. What if I, like, combust the wall where the shadow guy is? You can go ahead and try that. Just blow it apart and where it can't cast a shadow there. Oh. Anymore, see what happens. Ah. But, All right, so that's uh, 2d6 plus 2, I'm assuming? Uh, yep. For your... Okay, so I'll just lob a big old explosive ball of energy at it, and And uh, what seven. tags are you using for that? Oh, uh, now yeah. that I'm a battle mage... Yep. You get a range and then two more. Okay, well... It's going to be long, because you have how, how big is the area? Like, how big is the shadow? Um, It's like, I'd say, the shadows on the wall are by, like, twice. Like, maybe 50% more than human size, and, and Romero is, like, three times human size. It's a big room. Okay. But I probably don't need to use the area modifier, then. Uh, you would definitely catch your comrades in that if you did it. Yeah. Well, I mean... <laughs> yeah, thanks. <laughs> All right, so tags, let's do forceful and hmm. shadow killing. <laughs> I was searching for that one. <laughs> um, I guess messy. All right. What? Oh, no, I can't think of how that could go. Oh, and that you were with seven there? Uh, oh, 1d4. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, I rolled a 7, rolled a seven. Okay, so, uh, pick one of the downsides, and then I'll tell you what happens. It's, uh... It... Uh, unforeseen side effects. Uh, that's the cast spell, and you're doing black magic, so it's Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, let's... Hmm. The spell's effects are superficial and temporary. Uh, that's not it either. 
Oh under black magic on the on the lower left. This is so, my balls are fucking it's throbbing. See, you draw one tag <laughs> on this spot. Bad, um, I remove a tag of my choice, and you deal less damage, or you take minus one ongoing int until you have until you can rest. Um, you can remove a tag. All right, I'm gonna remove the uh, messy yes, tag. Messy. Yes. All right, so go ahead and roll me your damage. You one d eight plus right. whatever else would add it be added from the tags. Uh, I don't think anything else is added. Alright. Six. So that does pierce the Shadow's armor. It does take damage. Um, but as it, as your fireball hits the far wall, uh, as all of the shadows on the wall momentarily flicker out from the bright light right there, uh, everyone who's in the light feels really bad. Oh no. And they all also <laughs> take that six damage. <laughs> Uh, also take but, six but that's damage. not that's not me though right because they, they feel for a moment that they become intangible and not in a good way well i'm pretty good i said i went to the dark and never clarified that i came back into it because i only have six health <laughs> 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 oh god okay all right, so we're going to go to ship now. What are you doing? Yeah, what are you doing um, in the darkness? I'm kind of hobbling in the dark, like, using my rapier as, like, a walking stick, because I hurt real bad. Um, I have, like, a healing potion. Oh, wait, can you use healing potions during battle? Yes, Cause you I'm just slam one. Okay. If you want to. Um, how much do healing potions heal? Uh, let me look. Got a bookmark right here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Healing potion gives you ten damage of healing. Okay, cool. I'm just gonna slam that potion. Is it always ten? I thought you had it's a always, roll. It's always it's ten. Al it's always ten. Okay. I'm just gonna slam that healing potion while I'm just kind of hanging out in the darkness here. You can do that. I'm just All right, gonna... let's go back to uh, Samuel then. All right. You are currently uh, locked, locked, engaged in battle with a shadow man. Okay. Well, uh, I guess it's time for me to uh, return the favor. I know Romero didn't do much with his attack, but I've got well, to Well, oh, it. thanks. Thanks for just throwing that in. I got it. What? So, well, as long as we're being condescending about things, you could have done a little more than just block the blades. Can, but, you know, can hey. we rewind the audio? Because I think I'm not exactly inaccurate. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm I'm just gonna I'm gonna hack and slash him back. Um, All right, I get to roll dex for this because my, uh, of the tag on my rapier. So it's two d six plus two. Got a nine on hack and slash. All right, uh, so go ahead and roll me your damage. Yes, that's I believe d six. Right. I think yours is d six. Yeah. No, it's d eight. Okay. Four. Ooh. All right. Um, you actually <laughs> deal some damage, hey. even though you did about the same damage as uh, Romero did earlier. They seem to have lost some of the defenses. Oh, great! Probably from getting you know burst with a terrible fireball, <laughs> making them a little more insubstantial than before. They a little hey, less black happen. than they had been in previously. Hey, Bohan, you hear that? God called your fireball stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was terrible, as in like inspiring terror. Uh, maybe I don't know. Whatever. All right. So um, as you do this, Th however, this is a religious schism that we um, just had right here. <laughs> the the shadow, since you had to, you didn't roll above a ten. Uh, bodily grabs you and lifts you above his head. Oh. You are floating in the air with nothing below you. <laughs> okay. What my scream of fear covered up part of your description. <laughs> you are uh, you are you are actually like float Your body is floating in the air. Oh. And you feel like something's holding you up, but nothing is. Well, that blows. Okay. Just like, like, strong man have you above his head, just like shaking you. All right. All my effort is going toward uh, making sure that my internal screams for my mommy are not being vocalized where anyone can hear. <laughs> All right, Romero, what do you want to do? Am I recovered yet? Because uh, last night... Yeah. You're dragging yourself back on your feet, and that shadow man is coming in for another punch. Okay, I have a, I have an idea. Um, how close am I to the wall? You're about twice. You're about halfway between everyone else that's in the light and the wall. 
Uh, I mean, can I reach the wall with my sword, theoretically, or? Uh, you're still, like, 15 feet away or something. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Um, hmm. All right. So, I want to try to do something. I, well, I guess I got a first order of business is to, uh, get him out of Actually, can I time out for one second, because, uh, Beatus' internet just dropped. Yeah, oh. oh, geez. Well, you know, actually, we can, can we, uh, well, I mean, I don't know, can we, can, like, well, I'll edit this out, obviously. Like, you can just um, add him back to the call. Let me ask you if. Oh, you know what? Uh, he says keep going, though. He can put it into the story somehow. <laughs> so, <laughs> good, good luck, 100 hogs. Oh, um, man. What are you doing, Romero? Uh, what do you call it? All right, so this is what I'm doing. All right. Um, all right, I'm sorry, uh, Samuel. I got it. This guy's coming in for another punch. Uh, since I'm since I'm pretty big, more my shadow is relative to him, I kind of want to crouch down and go for a straightforward stab. I think he's back. A uh, straightforward stab. Yeah, and that'll be like half his body height, so that, that's that's probably gonna be very effective. All right. Well, th- thanks. All right. Cool. Let's do it then. Probably. Okay. <laughs> I'll. Uh, oh, well, I roll. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, I gotta roll. Is that a one d? Is that one d eight plus one d four? No, two d six plus two. Roll two d six plus two. I feel like you guys are, like, teaching your grandmother how to play a tape. I keep forgetting, like, what the <laughs> fucking um, things are. All right. So, anyway, I got a nine. All right. So, roll your damage, please. Uh, and that's 1d8 plus 1d4. Yes. Plus 1d4. Seven. Hey. Yes. All right. So, um, as you uh, move back and just slam your sword point force into him, it goes straight through. And oh. you suddenly feel a heavy weight on your on the end of your blade. Oh, I so know what I want to do, but I don't know if I can. But go ahead. No, keep going. So okay. So he, he, so momentarily the shadow has stopped. He he is impaled bodily. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try something really crazy here. I want to like turn around quick, jump in the air, and swing my sword forward such that his body hits the other shadow guy who's holding up Samuel. Okay. Samuel. That... Samuel, excuse me. Well, I'm look. <laughs> Give me you, a. You heard my uh, shit with say strength to fight danger from the sun. You hear how I pronounce video game characters, so I don't think this should come as a surprise to you. Uh, quick, uh, quick aside. Beatus is back. Okay. Yep. Um, and and now that he's back, I should say, are you hearing what I am trying to do? Because it's awesome. It sounds pretty badass. Okay, anyway, so I, I want to do that, so I got to roll. Is that like a, a D100 or something? I'm going to say you're going to do a Defy Danger Strength. So, so 2D6 plus, plus two. your strength. Yeah. Because you're lifting a very heavy thing. 2D6 two two plus 2. 8? Okay. Um, you don't quite jump so much as you swing the uh, the body mightily forward and around. Yeah. But as it hits where you your shadow is on the wall, it hits you. And you both go flying into the third shadow. Go ahead and roll me a, uh, a d8. No, a 2d6, I mean. A 1d6. La. 1d6. Five? Okay. Um, you and the sh- other shadow each take six damage. Oh, and the shit. shadow on your sword evaporates. Whoa. Hey. Um, and you dang. are... And he drops Samuel and... You, uh, Samuel is on top of Romero on the ground, and y'all tangled up in something that's not there. Uh, like, yeah, I understand. Um, can, uh, does the six damage I take, is that minus one because of the armor, or is it just six? Uh, you just take six. Okay, got it. All right, so I'm down to 11. Uh-oh. Okay. So, Bohan, Romero, and Sa- there's this guy, uh, the shadow on the wall now is a big blob with, like, arms and, like, limbs poking out of it. <laughs> Some uh, of them are if- ours. Yes, if you look at Samuel and Romero, it looks like there's spaces between them where, like, another body would be, but right. it's not there. Hmm. And so my wall combustion thing did jack squat, right? No, it did a, it, it did a lot of damage, but it also hurt any other shadow that was all, also up there. Cause oh, okay. Because the light, like, basically made the shadows go away for a little while, and that hurt a lot. Because you need your shadow. Hmm, light, huh? What if I took the rod back and shined it? Or, uh, wait, what am I thinking here? Hmm. Oh, God, here we go. (laughs) Oh, no, what if I take the rod and shove it in the empty space where they're wrestling? 
Uh, you can try that. Let's do it. All right, you can pull the rod out and um, give me a hack and slash just because you're trying to aim in like a tangled mess of bodies. Gotcha. So you don't hit and one so of them. And so what would that be? Uh, that'd be 2d6 plus strength. Uh, okay, my strength is actually a minus modifier. Then you take a minus on this. Yep, yep. <laughs> Two. Oh, um, uh, you just like, roll me a, a d6. Oh, no, no. Okay. I've, I've taken a lot of where this is going. I, I've taken a lot of blunt force trauma. All right. Here. Uh, since after you pull that rod out, it's completely dark in the room. Uh, you don't know who hit you, but uh, a, a limb just kind of whacks you right across the mouth <laughs> as you try to approach them. I declare victory. <laughs> and uh, speaking of which, Romero and Salazar, you both kind of you notice that you're just fighting each other now. Oh, I'm definitely what? losing in that case. <laughs> Are we like we were just watching the shadows and I'm not even noticing? Like I'm like I yeah, well, you, you both kind of like are like wrestling for like a couple seconds to realize that it's just you two now. <laughs> That's embarrassing. Like Romero has seven a headlock. So exactly as I thought would happen, pulling the rod out and eliminating, eliminating the light source got rid of the shadow people. Yeah, but we're gonna I think need the rod in there. Wait. I have to unlearn what I know from video games. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, maybe. Um, <laughs> okay. Well, if you remember, the idol is also being projected on that right. wall. Uh, and you can't get to where it should be. Uh, I get do it. probably definitely need that. All right. Before we go back to it, um, let, I, I could use a poultice or an herb. Or something. Go ahead let's, and herb yourself up. Let's smoke them um, if you got them. Uh. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll, I have one W written next to Pulse slash herb on my sheet. Is so you probably used one use already, so you have one left. Yeah, that makes sense, because I gave it to um, Carl before. So, mm -hmm. All right, anyway, all right, I'll take an herb. How much is that? Ten? Seven. Seven. Uh, oof. All right. Well, better. Okay. All right, so at the moment... Nothing seems to be happening in this room. It's dark again. Uh, anyone who's holding a torch can see around them, like they could before, but y'all spread out. Well, at least Carl is. Carl's off alone by himself. Yeah, I'm just kind of hanging out. Hey, wait, Samuel kind of owes me his life. <laughs> um, <laughs> maybe. Um, so the shadows and in turn the idol are only projected when the broad light source comes up, right? Nothing is, with our torches or my well, magic Well, your torches just don't pants your far enough into to that far wall. You don't know, maybe you've got close it would, but nothing you have will do enough light to project like all the way across the room like, like it has been. Okay, I gotcha. So if we want this idol, we're gonna have to deal with these shadow bros. Hey, did you just call me a has-been? <laughs> no. I'm sorry. Anyway, that was a character. But, <laughs> um, uh, what do you call it? Uh... So what are we doing here? Yeah, what are you doing? You're just uh, kind of staying in the darkness. S Samuel, you okay? You're you seem a little um, not feeling too great. I mean, I'm out of. I have a ration. Yeah, uh, I, I also I don't have know that... rations, but I don't think they heal HPs. Do they? Nope. No. They just use eat them to not a die. Anybody uh, got a potion or anything left? I nah, don't mind. I think, uh, did I use a healing potion last time? I don't think. I you don't did. think. Anyone? Because okay, I you. start with one, I believe. Because I, yeah, I have one healing potion. Right now, he's doing the worst of all of us. <laughs> Just judging by eyesight, I don't know about the medical profession, <laughs> what that entails here. All right. Well, you can have my healing potion. Thank I guess. you. This is called using up your resources. I know. I'm up to. I'm back to twenty. Twenty's good. Fort fortunately, you're but a shadow of the adventure you claim to be, sir. <laughs> Fort. Fort Fortunately, I do a little fist pump in the darkness. All right, wait. I ha I have kind of a plan. Um, tell me what you think of this. We kind of know that the shadow thing is going to come back when we put the rod in. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I vote one of us puts the rod in, and the other three get ready for like a full on two dimensional attack. If what possible. if one of us uh, stayed next to the big podium and tried to like? be on the right side of the force field once it goes up when we plug the light in. Hmm. Yeah. We could also... Well, uh, can you take the idol, like, where the idol would be when the light comes up, grab it, then take the rod out, or would we lose it by doing that? 
before uh, one, the Shadow one, Guys have a chance to react. One way to find out. I also had an idea for Carl's fat body, and that was to get really close to light, to be a very large shadow and trying to sit down on the shadows that are smaller than me. <laughs> oh, yeah. Can we, like, telefrag the shadows? That could be. Um, you don't know. But you um, don't know. The, the one thing I do want to point out, not to be a, a, a jerk here or whatever, but um, if, like, you were to grab that, uh, the uh, the totem thing, right? If there was some sort of shadow trap involved, mm. you know, I mean, the problem is it's such a short window, you don't want to just take some damage. And I don't know. That's, I, I mean, I'm just throwing that out there, but other than that, it's not necessarily a showstopper for the plan. <laughs> hmm. Or you could, like, make your fingers look like scissors in the light and, like, cut their heads off <laughs> when they come up. Like, the really big scissors. Yeah, I'll just confuse them and make them think there's a doggy. <gasps> what? <laughs> Oh, oh, all right, here's the plan. Little bunny foo-foo, and they'll be so freaked out. All right, Bohan, do you want to be on rod duty, or do we need you for a fireball, what do you think? Yeah, I'm pretty good yeah, at rod From duty. before, you know that his fireball is going to hurt everybody. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, if okay. we just get yeah. clear and let him do the fireball, and I don't know, grin and bear it? Uh, mm. yeah, well, wait, if, wait. if we don't cast shadows, they can't see us, right? That's true. You so if we all... That take cover, and make them appear, then I can just lop fire willy-nilly until they die and it won't hurt us. <laughs> you can you can try that. Yeah, yeah alright. It's not a bad idea. Let's do that. Let's. Alright, yes. so let's all take cover. Let's just mm-hmm. get them where they spawn. And, and... Okay. Yeah. Let's so after we're them. all well positioned, I put the rod back in and see what comes up. Alright, uh, when you put the rod back in, uh, you do see the one shadowy figure that was there before. You also notice that like light is starting to not creep to the corners of the room around the end of the room now. Uh-oh. Like, it's starting to, like, get a little, like, shadowy tendrils kind of pushing their mm-hmm. way into it. Mm-hmm. All right. It's gross. Uh, so, do you want me to slot fire at it, or what? Yeah, is the... By the way, the idol is in, like, roughly center of all this light, or...? Yes. Okay. So, we it's got... about 10 feet of front of you, and it's kind of sitting there. All right. We well, we have we have a little time, I I guess. So yeah, maybe I don't know. It's worth a shot. Yeah. All right. Oh, when I lopped fire the first time, did, was there any way for us to tell if anything happened to the idol? Uh, it the the shadow flicked out a little bit, like everything else did, but nothing seemed else seemed to happen to it. it didn't move or anything. Okay. So it supposedly did not take damage like everyone uh, else did. You don't know. Okay. <laughs> well, who cares? Let's lop some fire around. All right, go ahead and give me a. Uh... Actually, give me a cast spell for this one because you're not really f- doing anything in duress. And then describe what you want. What you're trying to do. Well, I am more or less what I did before, just putting a huge concentrated ball of fire directly to where that one shadow guy is. All right, and go ahead I rolled and, uh, a nine. You rolled a nine. Okay, I'm just gonna tell you what happened in this one. Uh, okay. As you hit that shadow, it like it gets it like just bursts outwards and like kind of fades away. Um, so the back wall seems to be clear now, aside from that the idol. However, the like shadow like around the edges is like kind of pushing in a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more now. Slowly and slowly, so it looks like whatever stuff in this room that makes uh, light not go pinch very far is starting to even overtake the light shining from the rod. Mm. So we need to run for that idol now, I think. Yeah. Alright, now it is time for you to use my new move in the nick of time. <laughs> <laughs> well, I better roll well. Ten! I get there in the nick of time! You know, right, we had so what, time! What are you doing in the nick of time? <laughs> Um, Describe it to me. All right, I just want to just run up and grab the idol as quickly <laughs> as possible. <laughs> okay. As quickly as possible or in the nick of time? So oh. you run up. Right. I'm sorry, can I just recap what happened there? Yes. I want to run up and grab the idol in the nick of time. Can you describe that to me? Yes, I would like to run up and grab <laughs> that idol in the nick of time. All right, so so you run, like, laterally across the room and kind of and grab the idol as you run by. Mm-hmm. Um, as it moves... You feel the weight, and it appears in your arms, and you kind of just fall to the ground with it, because it's heavier than you thought it'd be. Um, when you do this, the sh- uh, pedestal in the center of the room 
and the shadow is casting both grind upwards by about a foot, and the room starts shaking. Mm. That's a good sign, I think. All right, was that uh, so hard? We literally just had to go grab it. The uh, rod snuffs out, but the room is not like magically dark anymore. It's just normal dark. Do we still have and those torches? Are they you still, still around? Yes, and they're still casting casting light. And okay. uh, uh, things are rumbling. The the back wall that the shadows are on is like breaking apart and falling apart, revealing a passage beyond. All right, let's nick of time that. <laughs> no, no, we have time. If you keep doing nick of time, it's like ah, all right. No, sorry, go ahead. So what are you guys doing? This room is shaking pretty violently at this point. I would assume the plan I'm is to go with get out of this room. Yeah. yeah, sounds right. I'm not going to describe the manner in which, because apparently that's a sore spot. <laughs> I'm just saying! <laughs> Look, no, I mean, I'm happy with that it happened, and it worked out. I, all right, no, anyway. Um, yeah, let's let's run out. Yes. All right, you leaving the rat behind? Because you it's stuck in the hole now, you can't get it out. You lost uh... it. He gave it up to get a better treasure. There will be other rods. Yeah, <laughs> there's lots of rods in yeah, life. I... Mm. All right, so um, as you all run out of this room, it once again just collapses behind you, blocking the way back. Is the coin okay? But, yes, it's in your pocket. Okay, good. Someone's pocket. <laughs> so um, as you get in here, uh, it's a rather long hallway. You notice two things immediately. Um, first, this hallway goes way farther than you can see. Uh, second, you see about 30 feet up as you're walking down a rather large hole through both sides of the uh, hallway. Looks like something burst through the hall, the wall into the hallway then burst through the adjoining wall out of the hallway. And there's rubble everywhere. You see some blood on the ground uh, but nothing immediately is apparent. And the, the both ways are kind of collapsed. We could probably squeeze through if you, if you wanted to. Is it non-human blood? Cares? It's it's fucking things collapsing. We can we you can play know. CSI later. It would it would take more checking to know that. Oh uh, sure. I'll dwell on my past mistakes. While <laughs> <laughs> oh my lord. All right, so you got kind of a couple options of what way to go here because you could squeeze through these like broken walls if you want to. You can just keep going straight. The way that the the temple was intended to go. Mm, I'm thinking that thing made a beeline for. Nearest exit, and, and, and made one, holes. I guess, or, or made one, yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm down with that. Sure, me too. Okay, right. let's follow the path of the behemoth of indiscriminate origin. Hmm. All right, so you all kind of squeeze and climb through, move rocks out of the way, and everything. Uh, you immediately come into a much more natural-looking cave. It's not built up. It's just, like, rock walls and stalactites and all that fancy cave shit. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> you... fancy cave. This cave is so fancy. It's so nice in here. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have to leave? designer. I've seen fancier. All right, so um, as you walk through this cave, it slightly... It gradually slopes upwards. Uh, there's not that many twists and turns in it. You do see... Many piles of, like, gristle and blood and bones that look and smell fresh. Uh, <laughs> not Non-human remains, you can see. But how do they them. taste? <laughs> like, I, like to think that was like, I like to think that was, like, a commercial. Like, bones, they smell so fresh. <laughs> and uh, eventually, you, um, after about 10, 15 minutes of walking, you uh, come to a, a fork in the cave, but one end is like completely blocked off. You have to choose the other way to go. So you take that turn because you have a choice. Mm-hmm. Uh, and as you come down, you start hearing noises. Uh, like, sounds like activity, sounds like people running around, uh, chattering in some language you don't understand ahead of you. And you see like a, a vague blue glow coming from further down the, uh, the, cave, the cave mouth. Oh, that's the worst color. Mm. I mean, so we're out of danger now. At least right? a vague uh, red glow. You as have far as you know, you no. are yes. <laughs> so we're yeah we're we're out of uh, temple crumbling danger. Or? Yes, you're out of that danger. All right, uh, Carl. You you. I want to make you. Uh, you're soft, but I want to make you hard like me. Why don't, why don't okay. you take? Why why don't you tell us what to do? Okay. Um. Well, let's see. Do I hit? Well, 
Because it's just a cave, right? We're still just in a like a pretty plain ass cave, just with a blue glow at the end there. Yeah, basically, yeah. Okay. Well, I suppose I could attempt to look for a trap or something. Even though it's just a plain ass cave. I mean, maybe those people are setting up traps. Maybe they live there. Also, how how what is the die for uh, rolling or detecting traps? It's two d six. Okay, it's just two d six plus my dexterity bonus. It's it's always two d six. Okay. Whenever you're doing a thing, it's 2d6. Okay. Uh, what is my dexterity again? Uh, okay. Seven. All right, so you get, I think it's hold one for that. Hmm? Let me see. Let me look here. It's a thief. Thief, 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 thief. Trap expert. Okay, so you get, you get ask one of those three questions under trap expert. Okay, um... Is there a trap in the cell? What activates it? Um, you know for a fact that there are no there are no traps all the way up through this through this hallway as you walk through carefully and look at, and you're looking for stuff. All right, I say we just go right up to that blue place and see what is up with that thing. There's no traps, guys. It's probably safe. You can trust me. At, at least until we get there. But okay. At least, oh. yeah. Just get up, get up, get up to the corner and just kind of peek around. All right. Well, I've shown Carl the power of the arcane arts, so I trust his judgment. <laughs> I will trust Carl because he realizes just how great I am. <laughs> okay, so um, as you as you all walk up to the end of this cave mouth, you find it opens up into a moderate moderate sized cavern. There's a lot of like glowy, like fungus stuff glowing in the the ceiling, illuminating everything. Uh, you're about fifty feet above the bottom of this cavern, and as you look down, you see a village. Wait, mm-hmm. wait. Who's hold, who's holding Nidal right now? I think uh, I've still, Samuel I've still has got it. it. Yeah. Hand it okay. off. Gotcha. I got it's it pretty heavy. I mean, it's made of gold. Time. But right. it's about as big as, like, two heads on yeah. top of each other. Yeah, I understand. Uh, okay. I just want to make sure we still had that. But anyway, because I don't know if we want to be, and you guys correct me if I'm wrong here, because I'm the dumb fighter, parading around the village with this, like, expensive-looking totem, mm-hmm. you know? I work, you know, I've been to whatever this world's equivalent of New York City is, and <laughs> I, uh, you know, I don't know, just maybe if if you have, like, a pack, you maybe put it in your adventure pack at least, I don't know if it fits or something. Um, it would fit pretty tightly. You could probably wrap it in something, too, just to make sure. Yeah, but, yeah, you can, you can, you can hide it well enough. You're an adventure, you know how to stow stuff. Yeah, I, I just think that's a good idea. You, you guys cool with that? Yeah, yeah, okay. Just better safe than sorry. All right, so um, as you look down here, you notice a couple of things pretty much immediately. Mm-hmm. Uh, one, it's not that bright in here, but it's bright enough to see. Uh, the houses are fungal in nature. Look like they've been made from, like, those... Remember those, like, mushroom trees you, you I, hit that troll with last time? I, like, that kind of stuff. So I, is this a Smurf village? Yes, think- except the people are also mushroom people. I was thinking Toad House from Mario Three, but they're like ha- they're like Carl Carl um, height. Let's just be mushroom. honest. Oh, do man. they do they look like the mushroom people from Dark Souls that I've seen in like Google Images or I <laughs> whatever you want to imagine. <laughs> I hope not. They're scary. But anyway, um, everything is related. these ones. They don't yes. look scary, but you're far away. Okay. Well, and as far if I'm looking around at the village, people are running around. Uh, seems like there's a lot of tension in the air. Are they talking, or do um, they communicate non-verbally? I don't, I don't think we can see. You hear, there. you're kind of too far away to okay. discern any, any vocalization, but you do hear noises, like like people are talking to each other. Okay. Yeah, it's like you hear in the peas and carrots mumble mumble in the back of a restaurant. <laughs> let's prepare our best mushroom puns, I think, and let's get going there. <laughs> I don't know, are you, you guys down with that? Want to visit the mushroom people? Sure. Or? Sure, yeah. Absolutely. All right, Maybe I'll so... flirt with one of them and get them to take me to her bedroom. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> so you all you all descend the the wall of the cavern. And you kind of slide down. Um, as you get to the bottom, a couple of mushroom people with like mushroom spears notice you and like rush up to you. <laughs> mushroom <laughs> spears? <laughs> <laughs> that they sounds like the most harmless thing. At all. <laughs> no, they just they just poking them at you. They're actually not sharp. They they look like they're just rounded at the end. I, I they don't look these, like they make good weapons. I bet these people have the most delicious soups. <laughs> so, so um they they shout at you and you do understand them. They're speaking common, mm-hmm. and they ask you, "Who are you? What are you doing here?" 
Well, there's Spore where that came from, so let's be, I think let's be, I don't know, I, I, I could take them, but, you know, I mean, let's be nice, I guess. Well, I mean, right? they're soft, so. Yeah, right? <laughs> you see this big saw fucking blade I got? Um, I don't know, I, I'll, 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 uh, I'll, I'll come up and wait, like, hold my hand up and be like, hey, uh, we're, we come in, we're just passing through every, you know, no harm can, Is, is this a thing that's passable? Can we pass through? Does, yeah, do you mind? Thing? They're an issue. Um, they look at each other and they they lower their spears and they say, uh, "Yeah, we don't get visitors here very often. How did you get in here? And what are you doing?" <laughs> oh. Well, we came from that ziggurat place. We were treasure hunting. Snake, snake, snake on the ziggurat. Yeah. Is there like a big um, monster who came through here? There's lots of bones that were very uh, fresh. W when when uh, you say that, they both look at you in horror, and. And uh, and they say yes, yes. He just rampages through here. He's gonna come back soon. Um, we're we're currently doing. So we're currently preparing for for his return. The Great Destroyer. He hurt so many people. All right. Um, so bad. I got I got two questions for you here, uh, Mushroom Guy. Uh, do you have any healing? How big is this monster? Are we talking? He was he was a towering giant. Remember. The, they're like yeah, no, feet feet tall. Yeah, I didn't want to bring it up, you know. Just guys, um, uh, I'm looking at the ground the whole time. Giant, giant like me or bigger? Uh, bigger, much bigger. Um, all right. Can I can I call a quick group huddle? Um, listen. Uh, yeah. I mean, they're cute. I could go either way on this, but I think if they have some kind of healing shit, we are low on that. For yeah, the way yeah. Back. I was, Maybe we could... I, had, I was gonna uh, try to, you know, get them to patch us up and send us on our way where we need to be in exchange for, you know, doing a favor, helping them out. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, you've been on many adventures, so I do trust your judgment there. Several um, roll, yes. Yeah. No. Okay. Yeah, that's voice of experience. I'm cool with that. You guys. <laughs> Carl, mm -hmm. Bo Carl yeah. Bohan, you down? Yeah, sure. That sounds fair. Yeah. I'm going to use the move parlay because no one's ever <laughs> rolled anything with charisma before. <laughs> uh, leverage is something they need or want. I'm going to offer to defend them against the Great Destroyer and manipulate them into uh, giving us uh, supplies and directions to the surface from whence we originally came. Uh, plus two... That's a ten on parlay. It's ten. Well, they they look at you and they say, "Okay, um, yeah, I guess we could we can trust them outside. You are very large, <laughs> and you look like your your weapons have actual points on them, which they appreciate because they don't really have that much of that stuff down here." Um, they say, "But we've already got a, a plan for taking care of the beast." Um, they kind of motion over towards the the far edge of town. By like it looks like a like a kind of an open cliff underground, and they say, I mean, if you want to help with that, you can go ahead. Uh, and they one of them ruffles through his packs here, and he gives me a wad of bandages. They're not like rolled up; they're kind of a wad. But they they smell like healing kind of stuff, like antiseptic. Oh, so you get a we'll give you four uses of bandages. Awesome. Okay. So Actually, tell tell me more about your plan for dealing with this thing. Uh, five uses of bandages. Five uses. No, no, four. Bandages. Yeah. Uh, that is. They look at each other and say, "It's not really our place to say, but the village elder is there, and he will." I mean, if you want to know. Yes, we would like to talk to uh, Chief Shroom. Okay. Right. Yeah, he's probably a fun guy. So you uh, you go <laughs> ahead. You can use a bandage if you want. Each one heals you. Uh, let me see here. Four damage. Okay. And that's all you get. That's all they have for you. I still have full health, don't I? Yeah, me, yeah, you have not been hurt yet. Me too. After you gave me your potion, thanks. Nice. All right. So, um, as you walk through the village, uh, many of the mushroom people are not as friendly as the guards were. They go in there. Most of them are hiding in their homes already because they're terrified of the terrible beast that came through and like crushed half the village. As you see, there are plenty of like crushed houses. Oh. And like mushed up fungus and stuff. You, you, it, mm. Bo Bohan may or may not be feeling really bad right now. Depends on him. 
So what I'm wondering as you, about is why did he leave and not finish what he started? It's a good question. It's a little odd. Mm. Maybe just rampage straight through. And, and it was a pretty simple directive, assuming this is the same thing. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So um, as you uh, get to the other end of the village, uh, Samuel sees something that that fills his heart with terror, and Samuel especially, because um, you it is immediately apparent that the plan that the mushroom people have for Appeasing the terrible beast is uh, a maiden sacrifice. You see a vaguely female-looking mushroom tied up against a tree at the edge of its cliff face. Oh dear. (laughs) This seems like the worst plan. (laughs) And uh, several much people are running around, like, getting behind, uh, like, makeshift uh, barricades... Uh, and you hear a rather loud rumbling coming from the pit in front of her. <laughs> I'm sorry. Hold on one, one second here. What, what, is, what is a vaguely female mushroom? For? Well, she's not human, okay? Okay. It's just like, you feel I'm, like if those were male mushrooms that you're looking at before, this is a lady mushroom. I'm just kidding. I <laughs> um, hmm. She has two smaller <laughs> mushrooms on her chest, okay? Well, I, knew, I knew you were going there. Um, so am I, I reading this wrong, or are they just sacrificing her on on a pyre, basically? Basically, okay. it's more like like when they chained up the girl for uh, King Kong, like kind of that yeah, kind of thing. Yeah, still the worst yeah. plan. Okay. <laughs> is one they're, mush- they're is, simple people? Is one mushroom kind of guy kind of watching this creepily? Because you know, all right. Um, I think. Uh, well, uh, what was wrong with the plan where we just? fought the thing. I know I have a one-track mind. Well, they're guards, and they don't really make those decisions. <laughs> okay. Uh, wow. So maybe the village elder will help clear things up. Yeah, maybe Maybe we parlay again. Alright, uh, the elder is pretty obvious. He is, like, really, like, kind of dried out The only one who somehow got a beard out of fungus. Yeah, that too. But he's like, he looks <laughs> like a dried mushroom, basically. Mm. He's really old. Oh. Lots a lot of moisture. <laughs> So what are you gonna do? We gonna approach him? We gonna say hi? Or um, uh, um, who's got? I guess we should introduce ourselves first. I have a I have a charisma at twelve. Uh, who's got the high, Who's who's the most charismatic? I guess Samuel. Sixteen. Definitely yeah, not me. Yeah. yeah. Um. Nine. nine. Samuel, you want to talk to this guy? Yeah, I've talked to many village leaders in my seventeen year. Wait, no, that's not realistic. Uh, seventeen month well, um, career. All right, that's enough. That's enough elders for me. I don't know. I, I'm not great with calendars and such. So that's <laughs> many like, elders. Sounds like his whole life. I don't know. Just let me know when he, if he needs me to saw anything. So <laughs> go right ahead. All right, uh, I'm going to introduce uh, uh, our crew as a uh, a group of freelance adventurers in seek uh, uh, s- seeking uh, our fortune and to defend the. Uh, uh, the weak against those who would oppress them. He, he cut you off mid-sentence, saying, I don't have time for this nonsense. Who are you? Why are you here? The beast has gone his way back. We're doomed. We're doomed! <laughs> okay, uh, I'll just remind him that, uh, as he was probably informed, we were, we have agreed to help with the whole beast problem and take care of it, so we need every detail of the plan so we don't screw anything up. He wasn't Maybe informed he was of anything, because you walked directly there from the talking to those guards. Well, he's informed now, <laughs> so we need that information, so we don't and, do anything And he's like I, like, I don't need your help, weird meat man. We have this covered. We know how to deal with these terrible beasts from below. Appeasement is the only way. So so, so this isn't think... the first time this has happened. They're, they're like, you know... Pretty, pretty primitive, okay. so probably not. Can you can you suggest that their plan is a plan B? <laughs> uh, <laughs> like, we from above have also dealt with this sort of thing, and we think your plan is really bad. Charisma of sixteen, and that's what you're going with. You know, there may be a way to solve this. That Go ahead and sacrificing roll. mushroom ladies. Well, you don't really have any leverage over him right now. Exactly. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah, we do. Look at them. Look at this giant fucking thing I got. I mean, yeah, that's he, like... Can my leverage be uh, threatening him with Romero? Um, um... Yeah. Yes. 
Uh, but you well, don't use charisma for that, you use strength, as I recall. Well, uh... Okay, Romero, threaten him with your strength. <laughs> if that feels, I can threaten him with fire. Alright, oh, uh, do I have to, um, roll for that? Like, uh... Like, do I, do I roll for that, or I just tell him what I want? What I'm? What yeah, I'm you're gonna have to roll for it. Alright, what is to that? To see if you actually intimidate him. 2d6 plus strength yes. for intimidating. So, so that's 2, because it's a modifier, right? Yeah. Two, well, 2d6 plus two. 7? <laughs> huge. Um, you say every number are like a question. I'll, I, I mean, I'm trying to figure out. I'm like, well, seven out of twelve, I guess. Or no, fourteen. Well, normally twelve. I don't know. You, you tell me, dungeon dude. You succeeded. All right. Um, he looks at you and he sees that you are quite strong and imposing, but he's not really believing for you. He needs some kind of like concrete evidence that you can do what you say and take care of this beast for them. Uh, Otherwise, he's going to go I'm back to his plan. I'm going to show the idol as proof of our credentials. Like, we, mm. we just took this. Mm. Uh, when he sees that, he screams in terror and runs away. <laughs> oh. I was going to, you know, I was going to maybe break something. Maybe they had a rock. <laughs> I mean, that, you know. Um, having, having done that and, and brought that idol, like, immediately everyone who's around you scatters in all directions. Like, in back into the town. They see that thing, and they don't like it. Uh, and now they're avoiding you like you're diseased. Well, okay. All right. I'm going to untie mm. the poor mushroom lady tied to a stake. All right, um, and let her run away in fear. For, for, before you do that, <laughs> um, while all this was going down, talking to the, uh, the elder there, um, you suddenly hear a much louder rumbling, and you see a giant, like, stony fist grab onto one edge of the, uh, the cliff. And start pulling yourself up. Oh shit! Um, <laughs> I mean, look, we got the five band aids, right? Why? Why did we not ask about? Sca- That's a good point. Um, all right, I guess we gotta. We've... Something is climbing towards Wait, that maiden. Did, did I? Did I not succeed in untying the? Uh, the you sacrifice, damn. Son. I interrupted you because you have not gotten there yet. Oh. Now it, you are pressed for time. Oh. <laughs> I did not get there in the nick of time. Oh no! Oh no! Um, okay. I got a four on that roll. So what happens is, is as Samuel uh, breaks from the rest of the party and just charges towards the the poor mushroom girl tied to a mushroom stake at the edge of the cliff, um, a second giant stony hand comes up from the depths and and grabs on to the top of the pole she is tied to and pulls it out of the ground. And he's like waving her around like a like, like a, a sword, except she's tied to it, and she's in the air screaming like bloody murder. I have a bad feeling it's more like a fondue kind of thing. But uh, and, uh, be honest, uh, though, as, when mushroom people scream, does it sound kind of funny? As, as Samuel <laughs> com- gets to where she was, like he he reaches out and just like fingertips just miss her as she as she gets pulled away. Oh no! And and two giant angry stone eyes peer up from the edge of the cliff and look at him, and it's that golem that Bohan had had made, but it is bigger than it was. It has, like, it looks like it's been, like, just kind of, like, Katamari absorbing other pieces of bits oh. of stone into it, <laughs> and it has gotten bigger and beefier. I told you to kill non-humans, not absorb them? No, oh. it's moving stone. I get it, there's a metaphor. Racism is a monster of our own creation. Whoa! <laughs> that, you are the best GM ever! Um, okay. It's much like a rolling ball of rocks. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, and okay. there's, I like, you can see, visor. like, bits of, like, the temple yeah. poking out of it. You can see, like, acid scorch marks on edges of it, because it did, maybe, you don't know what happened there. Uh, so, this thing's kind of messed up, but it's big, and it's angry, and it's mean, and it has a girl hostage. It just... I'd like to point out to everyone that... He won't hurt us. Yeah, I was gonna say he, mm. unless something has changed, he, he probably oh. is not intending to kill us. Well, then you know what? Get on that somebody. I guess I could get on that fucking pole with her. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't mean he can't accidentally hurt you. Yeah, yeah, it is very oh, large and has mm. a lot of momentum. And are, are you gonna jump up and do the rescue attempt? Mm, well. I've been warned suddenly. I have this feeling it is very large and could accidentally hurt. Uh, Alright, I got one. Can I, um... Ugh, this is gonna be tricky. So she's just tied up right now, right? Yeah. She's, like, it is holding 
a a wooden stick that she is tied. Yeah, yeah. I want to. I'm gonna try. I don't know if this is too high for me. I'd like to jump up and cut the pole so that she kind of falls down. Maybe some daring dude who's done a lot of adventures can grab her or something like that. Like, like if she falls, but like kind of can a fire try trampoline. this. Do you remember that it is in a pit, and leaping towards it will leap you into the pit. Oh, I thought she was still above the cliff. No, I mean, you can. there are definitely things you can do in the situation to not fall into the pit, but just keep in mind, like, where it is. It's kind of like, it's like just rising up from the pit and, like, waving around a bit. Yeah. Sometimes it comes up uh, over the, the, the ledger, I'm assuming it doesn't. Sorry, no, I, I guess the way I was imagining, I thought she was, like, he's got one hand holding onto the cliff, so we don't really see him. And his other one he had kind of reached out with to yeah. hold the, the pole, so he, she was still over the ledge part of it. But if she's now above kind of, like, up in the air, like, sort of in pit territory, and then, yeah, that changes my assessment of mm. things. Um, I guess, I, god, alright, fuck it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna run up his one arm, and all try right. to climb him. Uh, give me a de- de- dexterity defy danger. Uh, that's 2d6 plus 1, I believe. 8? Alright, you manage to get a good way, but once you hit, like, the elbow, you lose your footing on the smooth stone, and you're hanging on the edge for dear life. Climbing up has become very difficult. Uh, but you are on the beast. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, it it seems to not even notice your presence. I figured. Um, Since I brought this thing to life, is there any way? I know I was only able to give it one directive, but is there any way he would listen to me? Think of me as his, you know, surrogate father. You could uh, try. Um. I'll say, stop moving! It <laughs> stop! Does not st- and wave my hands in the air. Would it respond futilely. to the idol in any way? Is that magic enough? Just well, wave that it does face. not respond to Bohan. Okay. I'll tell you that. Mm. And I was his idol. Keep crying. <laughs> <laughs> so, Romero is currently hanging from its arm as mm-hmm. it kind of as it pulls itself up the cliff face. Uh, what are the rest of you guys right, doing? Carl, you want to take a turn or shall I enact my daring plan? Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna watch you do the daring plan, but also I'm gonna think about maybe trying to help uh, <laughs> the lady that is still she's still on the the thing, right? The, the yeah, it's, lady? it's like he's he's holding her. Okay, like she's upside down now because he grabbed the top of it mm-hmm. and she's tied to it. She's screaming and screaming and screaming. It is awful. Okay, it it sounds just like Toadette in a uh, Mario Kart oh, Double Dash. God. Now I don't want to save her. Yes, it does. It's horrible. <laughs> Which is why we should leave. <laughs> yeah, maybe we should just all climb on this guy and just kind of, like, ride him out. All right, I'm this... going to use my two favorite moves, uh, bringing him back. Plan of action. Uh, there is still plenty of, of rigging and loose rope hanging from the stake uh, that has just been torn out of the ground and is waving not too far from uh, arm's reach. And now I'm going to roll Daring Devil to grab one of that, leap off it. I would like to interrupt you for a second. Okay. I think that last move on your sheet there might be appropriate for the situation as well, if you want to use it. You want, Are you saying in the nick of time? No, no. Uh, the last one on the first page. Oh, I'm not looking at the actual printed one. True love and high adventure. <laughs> <laughs> well, read it. When you attempt to enact a daring plan or defend the... Okay, yeah. Yeah, all right. I'll use true love and high adventure rather than daring devil. And no, I can use it too. It helps it. Okay. It makes it better. Uh, this is this is a three move action plan of action <laughs> to have the rope. True love and high adventure to gain three hold. And uh, I'm going to now roll daring devil to grab that rope, swing on it, and sort of like you know, a- and use the um, curvature of like its arm to just sort of loop to loop up and land on top of the arm to place myself okay. right next to the, the hand for the stake. Yes. Yes. This is going to be awesome. <laughs> I'm going to spend one of my uh, I guess since I lose all my hold success uh, uh, upon finishing the plan, I might as well spend all three well, I can use one, but the plan's not done until she's saved. Okay. I would say. So I mm-hmm. spend one hold to get or a 10 dead. plus on that. I end up exactly okay, where I so want to be, up on the hand. You happen to see a rope, like, hanging off its head, 
and it whips by, and you grab onto it, and the the force of it whipping by just flings you up, and you manage to land right next to her on its fist as it shakes around. You're on the Colossus. Okay. What do you do? Uh, I end up exactly where I want to be. I uh, show off and feel fantastic about it, take plus one forward, and I don't attract unwanted attention. I roll my eyes a little. <laughs> <laughs> you could have taken Carl with you. <laughs> Again. Oh, Carl man. can make his own way for a while. I left like ten minutes ago. <laughs> Carl realizes how awesome I am. Uh, Alright, so while this is happening, really what are you did. doing, Carl? Um, well, I'm... I'm I'm just a fat little motherfucker, so like... Well, remember, <laughs> now that Samuel's up there, he's kind of stuck up there. You Wait, can roll that? around and get big like him. Get hard like me! Oh, Wait. Oh, man. I gotta get hard. <laughs> yeah, what do the screams of uh, mushroom women do for you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no! Carl is into that. <laughs> oh man, I, I'm telling you, if this world had websites, uh, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm sad. This is a rock man, so I can't poison him. Mm. S- says who? He's got. Well, could I poison a rock man? Um, no. I'm sorry. Okay, what? that's what I was thinking. I was like, get all of the paper you can find. But maybe you could do something to stop him from getting onto this cliff. And mm. decimate the rest of the village because mm-hmm. he's still trying to do that too. Well, that was oh, my God. idea, but now there's two of us on it, so you don't want to knock them off. Well, right. anything you do is not going to happen immediately because it's very large. Mm-hmm. Oh, hmm, let's see. Can I just like try to? Well, because he doesn't really go after humans, but could I still try to get his attention? Does he even pay attention to humans, or does he just not notice them at all? Um. Well, uh, I'll give you this. You feel like if um. If you had some non-human traits or non-human something on you, okay, then maybe it would notice you. Yes. Um. Well, let's see. There's all these glowing ass mushrooms around. I'm just gonna pick a bunch of those off and like squeeze them all over my body. <laughs> all right. I'm gonna cover myself in the glowing blue mushrooms. As you do that, uh, suddenly its eyes just they <laughs> slowly turn towards you. What the fuck? And nothing changes but you feel malice in its gaze. <laughs> so I'm sorry. Hold on a minute. We entered this altar, or room, way back when, created this golem, and in the time it took us to fight these shadow creatures, this thing started menacing the Mushroom Society, and they built sacrifices to it? Well, it happened, it all happened very fast. Okay. Shut up. <laughs> all right. I mean, sacrificing's my first instinct in general, too. Okay, that makes sense, right? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's just how they solve things. Like, the economy of the Mushroom place is really slow, we better make another sacrifice, you know? You don't it's know. just an excuse for population. This would be an anthropologist's dream. Yeah, basically. Gotcha. Anyway. Yeah, not if they're the one getting sacrificed. <laughs> All right, so, Carl, it is, it, has, it is moving towards you and is bringing down its fist that has Samuel and the mushroom girl on it. It's going to sm- smush you. Oh, God. As it, as it comes down, Samuel, what are you doing? It's flying through the air faster, faster towards okay, him. I want to use uh, Daring Devil, laugh confidently, and uh, jump upon the spike so that it slips its grip, and instead of, uh, you know, hitting the ground with its fist, it sort of, it, 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 its fist is one, you know, stake distance high to make it a lot easier for Carl to dodge. Oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> um, so I'm going to roll that, and I get a 12. Okay. Wow. So I'll Whoa. just describe what happened because you don't need to deal with the other stuff for this one. Um, you managed to just like jump, leap onto the the stake that the girl is tied to, and, and with enough torque, managed to flip the whole thing around so it's face down. So as it comes down, the stake hits right next to Carl. The girl is on there screaming now with the stake on the ground, and the car has not been squished. Hooray! Uh, fortunately, Carl is short because that's about how much space is between him and the fist above him. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Awesome. But you don't have much time before it rears back for another blow. Mm-hmm. What do you do? I'm going to untie that mushroom lady. Hooray! Yes. All right. I'm untying <laughs> the mushroom lady. She gets down, and she's like two steps, but she immediately faints. I'm going to pick up... I'm going to scoop up the mushroom lady. I'm getting the blue, I'm getting the blue mushroom stuff on her now, and it's a little gross, but I'm saving her, I think. It depends on which mushroom society you're in. Okay. Well, Carl is just the right size to save this woman. I All think, right. yes. Carl, I think you just proposed. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, I yes. Imagined, I never imagined this is where my life would lead to. <laughs> All right. So are you running away? or? Yeah, I'm going to run away. I'm going to try and also, like, 
taunt the the golem dude a little bit, maybe like lead him away from the majority of the mushroom peoples. Um, there's no away. It's there's just no town. way. It's just the yeah. town. Oh, geez. Everything is towards town or hole. Well, hmm. I don't know. Am I? Am I? Am I? Am I like getting my footing and trying to like climb this thing more while? Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, let's go back to Romero while this is happening. Okay. So Romero, uh, you're on its other arm. Uh, it's still gripping the side of the uh the thing. Uh, what are you doing? You you managed I, to pull yourself back up onto it now. You haven't fallen off. I have a question because and probably something I should have asked before I jumped. Um, does this thing have a head? It does have a head. Okay. Because I would really like to get on the shoulder and swing really hard. Maybe even yell when I do it. Just like uh, get right right into the neck. Like hopefully there's a crack or something there that I could just like break through. I'm really hoping to. To decapitate this thing, and that is a thing you can do. Uh, first, give me a, another defy danger deck to get there. Uh, dex. That's as you run up its arm. Uh, okay. Um, sorry, I'm looking for that. Oh yeah, duh. Okay. Oh, actually, unless you want to do something else, like you could just like climb up all mightily, carefully, just use your muscles. So you can use strength that I guess too. Yeah, probably that because I have a better modifier yeah. for that. You just climb up with your giant yeah. sword in your teeth. Yep. Yeah, yeah, sure. I like, yeah, definitely. <laughs> and then, like, and grunt a lot while I do it. So, yes. I, that's 2d6 plus 2, I think, right? Oh, come on. All right. You you make it up. Um, You slip a couple times. It takes the longer you want it to, but you manage to get up on its shoulder, like, just gasping for breath because it was a lot of work. Because you you're, you're, you're got a lot of body mass. It's hard lifting yourself up. I Hey, I know. <laughs> You're not used to pull-ups. You got you have all like the glamour muscles. <laughs> that's, that's what past celebrity will do to you. Yeah, um, you let yourself go a little bit. All right. So now you may attack the beast, and since it can't really defend itself, just roll your damage. Or uh, uh, I don't know if anybody would want to en- help enchant this thing, or you know, maybe apply some fire to it. But you know, it'd be nice, mm-hmm. right? Remember, remember, Bohan. Everything you do doesn't have to be fire. You can do other things too. <laughs> Hey, well, what would you like it enchanted with? Do you remember, before, like, way back when, when we um, broke through that second gate and there was something that made it more, like, Sonic-y? Yeah, all the way, like, an hour ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Remember that? I, I mean, I, I'm hopefully not yelling this to Bohan from the top You want thing. your high-frequency blade, right? Yeah. I mean, it's rock. I, it's the same, you know. All right. Uh, how, how far away are we right now? Um, You're far... You can cast a spell on it from that distance. You're a relatively competent mage. <laughs> I mean, clearly. I mean, look what we're dealing with right now. <laughs> Alright, I'll give him the uh, supersonic blade. Alright, go ahead and give me cast a spell. Alrighty, let's see here. Alright, nine. Alright, what are your two effects on that? Under cast a spell. Let's see. Let's... Make it not last long. No real problem there. And then let's have it I mean, do a whole hell of a lot more than it was going to do. Okay. So what happens is um, as Bohan casts that spell, he, he basically makes like a wide-angle beam. And it hits the golem, it hits uh, Romero, it hits Romero's sword, and suddenly everything is vibrating. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> wow! All right, and it, it's vibrating a lot, and you feel like this may make everything more effective, but um, it's you're having trouble just standing upright at this point because like your whole body just shaking violently. All right, um, I guess we'll have to go with Plan B then because I don't think a person could do a lot of sawing in that <laughs> environment. So I'm I'm just gonna swing really, just swing really hard for. Okay, uh, you know what? What? Uh, yeah, Rory damage, and then have to do something else too. Uh, and I had a 1d4, right? Yeah, the... just roll your... Is that is that right? Oh, shit. That's right. No, no, that's not right, because you roll a 2d6. You gotta roll the d8 plus d4. Oh, I'm sorry. Just roll a d8. I'll, t- I'll keep that 3. Oh. No, that's okay. I got a, no. I got a 3 again anyway, so, so Alright, um, nine. you just, like, baseball swing your sword into the into the thing's neck, and it, like, digs in, like, halfway. Oh, saw. Yeah. Um, <laughs> as you do, like, like, like the second that um, your sword stops moving, like, and gets wedged in there, everything just violently shudders like one last time, and cracks just 
appear all over this thing. Cool. Like, everywhere. Just, just spider web off where you attacked it. All right. Um, hmm. Uh... I think I think I'm gonna be pretty happy with that and and just and try to rip my, wrench my sword out of it. How high am I? How high am I? Am, am up at, well, how high you're am good I? You're a good ways up. You're you're high enough that it's not safe just to jump off. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna see. But it. we'll come back to you in a second. Oh, so sorry, you're yeah. you're hanging on that sword, Carl. You're running from you're running. What are you doing? <laughs> you got a, a mushroom. I'm lady running in your with arms. this like mushroom lady, and she's getting all like gross and nasty from all this fun like mushroom gunk getting on her even she i mean she's like she's a mushroom but she's a clean mushroom i'm a nasty mushroom yeah <laughs> um i'm just running with this lady and she's still kind of unconscious i'm like shaking her a whole lot but she ain't doing much um okay well as as you run away um the the thing claws for you and you feel a sudden violent shudder just go through the ground and through everything as romero just cleaves of the sword and um it, like, just give me a Defy Danger Dex, please. Because okay. it is trying to hit you again. It is trying to smash you as all this happens. Oh, man. My Dex is just plus two. As you try to dodge. And Defy Danger is just 2d6 like everything else? Plus Dex. Okay. 13. Whoa. It comes down right behind you, oh, and geez. you don't even lose your footing. You just keep running. Dang. Um, it, that fatty in goat. fact, <laughs> as its fist, its fist comes down so hard, it, like, embeds itself in the ground and is stuck. Yeah. Oh man! So at this point, you see like the whole giant stone golem's like upper torso, uh, one arm bare in the ground, the other one's still kind of hanging on the edge of the uh, the cliff face, and Romero is like embedded in his neck. All right. What do you guys do now? It is not stopping. It's just damaged. Hmm. Hmm. All right. Well, I know what I want to do. I okay. Go ahead. I'm. I... I mean, I want to fucking soft. I want. I want to finish the job here. I'm gonna. I'm gonna try to like see if I can like do my back and forth serrated blade thing and hopefully like keep going through its neck. Do you All need right, another um, frequency boost? Uh, hey, if you're if you got him, uh, smoke him if you got him. <laughs> I don't even think that made sense there, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, he didn't smoke the high frequency blades if you've got him. All right, Bohan, maybe you can aim a little more accurately this time. Okay, so the sword is still in in its neck, right? Yeah, you can see like, the hilt and okay. him holding it. Okay, so I'll aim like right above the hilt. No, I'm I'm right above the hilt. I mean, I mean the blade. Nah, nah, the all right, nah, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. No, okay. Come on. Oh, duh! No, wait, stop! He's all cracked, right? Yeah. Hit him. <laughs> high frequency. Uh, high whatever. frequency his neck and hope his head blows off. No, high frequency the whole damn thing. He's all broken and shit. Maybe it'll just it'll crumble. Shake loose is, is the whole yeah. Thing. <laughs> just, well, I don't know. Whatever you want. I just, it's... I'm kind of nervous about exploding a rock magic rock guy into tinier rock guys, but we'll give it a shot. Why not? All right, so I'll just try to vibrate the entire thing and hope the cracks that Romero has made uh, cause some hell. All right. All right. Ten. Oh wow. Let's choose one of those things then. Let's see, this is a uh, cast a spell? Yep. Let's see. Uh, let's just say it doesn't last long. Alright. Uh, it starts violently shaking. The hairline cracks do become bigger non-hairline cracks. But just as it looks like it's about to crumble apart, it stops. Like, you feel like just a couple more seconds it would have fallen apart. All good, right. good. Poke it with the mushroom spear, it'll finish it. I... <laughs> I want to uh, drop down. Uh, it's holding itself up with like you know it, it found footholds in this cliff, right? That's true. It has like it's, if you look if you look down, you see its feet like dug in. This All cliff right, side. I want to dig them out. I want to attack its footholds and and have it cr- Wait. fall down. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I mean, it's a ways down there. You can get down there. Going down is a lot easier than going exactly. up. Exactly. Uh, All right. It's the mushroom village motto. I. <laughs> <laughs> I grab that um, that rope that I swung up that's still attached to the head, and I use it to swing down and around toward its feet and begin hacking and slashing at the dirt. Uh, what do you want me to roll for that? Um, give me just give me your uh, your fancy shit. My fancy shit called. roll. Okay, yeah. and I'm still uh, I'm taking plus one forward since the last one was awesome. So this is plus three. I got a nine. 
All right. So, uh, choose two. Choose two. Um, From Daring Devil. I'm going to end up exactly where I want to be and take plus one forward. So I may have attracted unwanted attention, and I did not take anyone with. All right, so you get down there, and you uh, still hanging from that rope, uh, hack it in the, into the dirt. It's, it is coming loose. It's not, it's not stone. It's just like clump clay and dirt and shit, so it's coming apart. It's losing its footing, uh, and we will come back to you because these are all combining to be one massive thing. Yes. <laughs> uh, Chip, you have gotten far enough away where you are not in, in immediate danger. What are you doing? Mm-hmm. Yeah, what are you doing? Um, the mushroom lady's unconscious, and I think I'm going to have to give this mushroom lady CPR, maybe. <laughs> but really, I just think this mushroom lady is very beautiful. You might get an infection if you do that. We, we have to talk about priorities after all this. <laughs> maybe you should I care get deeply your fungal... about this mushroom lady. Get your fungal growth in check. I looked into her unconscious just... eyeballs that were closed. Hush. I fell in love. I mean, she's my size hey. and everything. <laughs> Imagine the athlete's foot you would get from that. Mm-hmm. I don't know how CPR works. Uh, yeah, <laughs> how would that work? Um, uh, give me um, a roll plus intelligence okay. to see if you can do anything to bring her out of her stupor. By the way, I just Google image search mushroom types, and I found this chart of mushrooms. I just want everyone to know that. All right. And, and Mycena, it's beautiful. Oh. I got a nine. All right. You um, rouse her from her sleep by just shaking her a lot, because mm-hmm. that's all I can think of doing. CPR. And she, <laughs> and, and she her eyes flutter open, and she looks at you aghast and, like, just kind of stares at you for a while, and... and there's a there's a moment between you and her. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm imagining... Tell her to make sure that she's healthy. You need to take a toadstool sample. Yeah. No. No. God no. Damn it. Oh. So Chip, you may have just um, made a uh, had a mushroom woman fall in love with you. You don't you don't know. I mean, okay. It, everything's every, there's a lot going on right now. Well, I mean, I hope it, it works out between us. <laughs> well, how she can, um how could she not? motions for you to, <laughs> to you let her down. Mm-hmm. And, and and thanks you for for rescuing her from certain death. I ask her for her name. Uh, she oh. gives it to you. I, I got what is her name. Uh, I got I got a bunch of mushroom types here, and I would go with uh, actually I would go with Mycena, M Y C E N A. She has the most. She has the most common name in the in the village. It's Mycena. Mm-hmm. They're not very creative. No, she's I and also very small species with thin steps and. Mainly conical caps. Uh, oh, 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 wow. That is exactly just... what Carl's into. <laughs> F- F- FYI. <laughs> Hold on, FYI. Some ex- exude a liquid on breaking the stem. So. Oh, God. <laughs> Careful there. Whoa. Oh, uh. So, Carl, now that she's awake, <laughs> um, you. Sorry. Like... Sorry. What? No, uh, there, there's another kind called clitoside. <laughs> well, that's not, that I'm one's like, impossible to find. I'm like 12, so, alright. Uh, Carl, she looks expectantly at you like you're going to do something to solve this terrible problem that is plaguing the city. Mm-hmm. What do you do? You seem to have had all these expectations piled upon you all of a sudden. <laughs> uh, well, I kiss her and then say, I'll be back. And then I run off to fight the guy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you do this. Now, what do you do? We're not leaving you yet. <laughs> okay. Well, the guy's still, like... He's still, like, in one piece, but he's, like, really fucked up now, right? Yep. Okay. Um, hmm. Maybe there's something in the environment that could help you. <laughs> Maybe Samuel would know something in the area that might help you. Yeah. What do you, hmm. what do you say? <laughs> Uh, I mean, it wasn't the only stake. They, it's, it's not their first uh, sacrifice rodeo. Right. Um, hmm. Could, like, vault on one for extra leverage. Okay. Well, even even then, it could be any could sort be of environmental really thing anything. that might be useful That is what my move situation. says. There's always a thing Yes, but uh, I think that because of the move that Samuel would tell you what it is. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. There's... I mean, all of their weaponry, feeble as it is, could... I mean, it's got its uses, and it's all around. Just butt stop. There's all we really need to do is knock him off his belt. God right? damn it! 
Uh, I need a button. All right, button. I'll, I'll tell you. Um, there is a a pen of fungal bovine cow guys <laughs> mm-hmm. just kind of chilling out at one corner of the of the of the cave. Fungal cows. Fung- a bunch of big beefy mushroom cows. Like beefsteak mushrooms. Yes. Right. <laughs> is there a mush Donald's nearby too? There, there's, there's not. <laughs> oh, great. But they're all freaking out and like running around, mm-hmm. and maybe if they ran towards something, it might help. This is the okay. port town of Obello we found here. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> oh, shiitake. <laughs> oh, God. I was, I was holding on to that one. All right, what are we what are we doing here? I need to butt stomp this thing. I think. Okay. <laughs> now that you're fueled by love, yes. <laughs> focus it into your ass. Is there a, a are there stat bonuses for love? Is this that kind of game? I'm gonna give you a a, a plus one going forward. A plus for one. Now. A plus one to what? <laughs> plus one forward. Going forward to rules. Oh, okay. <laughs> in this in this immediate situation. I cast a love enchantment on his ass. <laughs> Is there a hard, I do need to get hard. Is there a hardened ass so that his butt stomp hurts more? Um, ah. Bohan can... I'll, I'll enchant your asshole with the power of Earth. <laughs> <laughs> I can make your butthole quake, man. <laughs> if that's what you want, I'm happy to make your butthole quake. No, like the whole butt, though. Well, reckless destruction is one of your... Uh, yeah, but the focal focuses. point of the butt is the butthole. That's like the nuclear, the <laughs> right, that's nucleus. where the magic goes. I forgot. I'm <laughs> oh, sorry. my God. Can we please not put reckless destruction in, and turn it into rectal destruction? I don't think... I hope, I hope this does much more than it's intended to. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> Maybe just a normal body slam. You could probably just, like, shoot him into the air with your power, too. That's I was that was actually the next thing I was gonna say. <laughs> so I'm gonna use like some wind magic bullshit to fling him into the air, mm-hmm. and then when he's near the apex of his leap, I will enchant his butthole with earth <laughs> magic <laughs> quake power. So his so his whole butt is like rumbling and jiggling, but it's hard as a rock. And All then right. uh, let him drop and see what happens. Okay, go ahead and give me that roll. <laughs> <Okay>. All right. <laughs> I want to see how effective you are, then I'll have... So is this for the uh, shooting him up portion? It's or be the... both. Okay, You're for doing everything. one roll for the whole shebang. Oh my god. Okay, <laughs> your spell oh, is no. amazingly effective. Oh my god. Don't even bother picking on those, those things here. Carl, mm-hmm. um, give me a defy danger dex to make sure you don't miss. Okay. Oh my god. Because you're kind of controlling a directory. Seven. Eight. Still okay, eight, too right. low. Okay, so you... Fly through the air, um, not gracefully, mm-hmm. but on target. Okay. And you just bodily slam right into the 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 golem's head, and there is just like a a huge clamor as it happens, and Romero is amazed at just the force that you use. Why <laughs> <Yeah, laughs> Right. <laughs> I'm a bit stunned by all of this. You, you're a bit stunned. Um. Now go impregnate her mush womb. Oh. Oh. <laughs> so, uh, you amazingly do not take any damage from this, but you're, like, just, like, kind of embedded. There's, like, a, a halfling-shaped, like, uh, indentation in this, in this head now, and you're in it. Okay. And the head has, like, moved back a little bit, and <clears throat> Romero's sword is no longer pinned in the gap it made. It has some give, so it could saw, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you know what? I'm not going to saw yet. Um, I'm, He's growing as a character. I'm, <laughs> You're still too busy staring at what just happened. Yeah, basically. No. I think I'm going to take a step back and spin my blaze three, almost not really 360, but like in that, in a clockwise direction as I walk around the back of the neck to hit it from the other side as hard. You know what I mean? Like a yes. real lumberjack. I see. Do you need any butt buffs? I don't go, need that. Go okay. ahead and no, you it. you're magicked out for the moment. Yeah, <laughs> go ahead and roll your damage because there's nothing stopping you from doing this. You're, you're cut, is always cut. the most exhausting for some reason. You're cut off. <laughs> okay, so that's a uh, two d six plus two. 
No, it's a D8 plus D6. I keep forgetting. Just, just do the damage. Yeah. It's not actively stopping you from doing it. Like that? Ooh, okay. Yes. Okay. Um, Ten. For those you cleave completely through, and the head just goes flying towards the ground in front of you with <laughs> Carl embedded in it. And the body, its hand just like loses its grip, and it's it's falling backwards, and it's falling into the pit. And Jump forward, Samuel. Samuel is still down there. What are you gonna do? Oh, <laughs> I might. <laughs> I don't think that was very effective. <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> uh, Sa- Samuel. F- uh falls away and everyone has a very touching uh, last words for their fallen comrade and that's when he crawls up over the side and says hey nice job actually looking <laughs> and then i and then i land on him <laughs> yes okay <laughs> so the the body falls into the darkness and several seconds later you hear a loud crash and everything just Thumps up and like falls back down, and the head is is there and it's like rolling about a little bit, but it 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 can't do anything. It's just a head. But wait, but it's Katamari, so we got to destroy this thing. Yeah, this is like the part of it that has the magic on it. The rest is just inert now. <laughs> so what are you gonna do with this this giant? It's like it's a it's a boulder size. It's big. Oh, uh, you gotta do something. Bohan, do you have a sensitivity training spell? Of course. Okay. <laughs> Do you want to cast it, or are we just going to talk about it? <laughs> so, what's what's your plan here? Um, uh, yeah. Make it not want to destroy all non-human life. I don't know. All make right, it peaceful. Uh, I mean, I used the magic rod when I brought it back to life before, Yeah. which buffed everything. Can we just sort of diffuse it and turn it back into a rock, really? Put it to rest. You could. Is there any way we could just destroy the entire thing so there's nothing left? No well, magical properties left in it? I mean... Or if there's I like mean, a tiny little pebble powered by hate, will that be enough? I mean, Romero's <laughs> got his, his sword, but none of you have like jackhammers and sledgehammers or just a big bunch of dynamite or anything. We, we do have Carl's ass. Yeah. yeah. Alright, so I'm gonna... Okay, I'm gonna concentrate very hard and think about the love that <laughs> Carl has just been through. <laughs> And focus that emotion into the rock head and chant, love everyone. Maybe we could have done that at the beginning of all this. (laughs) It's like an after-school special. A lot of conflict has to happen before we learn the lesson. Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead and give me your cast a spell. Okay, that's a nine. All right, and this, obviously it burns with fire or passion, obviously. Um, The the, the great stone head uh, realizes what it has done... (laughs) And what you made it do, and with one last, like, shudder, it just bursts into shards, and Bohan takes the f- most the bulk of them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not sh- I'm not sure that... I don't feel loved by that. <laughs> Roll me a d10. A uh, d10? A d10. Alright. Let's see. You take seven damage as you just, like, hit with shrapnel and the magic is gone <laughs> and everything is good in the world what a fucking day yep <laughs> hey, it's a living man <laughs> you know before they all ran off the mushrooms did promise that they'd show us a way to the surface if we help them and we've clearly been very helpful yeah yes you but, barely even destroyed the city anymore than it was but, you know we. I just hope we didn't use up our cred with that idle shit but you know hey whatever Maybe just hide it, and maybe they, maybe they got a short memory. Hey, yeah, you know. hey, Carl, is there anyone from the Mushroom Village that you think would be willing to help us? Oh, yes, I have just the lady. My Cena! <laughs> <laughs> and then a bunch of them come out, because it was the most common. Yeah, the many of them come out. They don't seem so fearful of you. Um... They have nothing to actually give you because they're a primitive society of mushroom people. Except their love, which Carr has gotten. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> you are led through the caves out into the world above. 
and you have escaped the terrible dungeon <laughs> of terror with the idol. Yay! Hooray! We did it. And now Kara is faced with, with a choice because Mycena will not leave the caves and go to the world above. It is too, too different and too strange for her. I tell her I have a job to complete, but I vow to return one day. And I leave her a lock of my hair because I'm weird. <laughs> it's, you leave her a greasy lock. Mm hmm. She thinks this is completely normal. She has, she has no context for a human <laughs> and much interaction. This is what I do, okay? <laughs> I, I imagine Carl could get away with a lot of his strange habits by saying, oh, no, that's just what, you know, we do up on the surface. You, you would understand. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you have escaped, um, and you're in, you're bruised up, you're not doing too hot, but you did not die. All right. <laughs> that's, that's always a plus. And that's all that really matters. All right, so we have one more thing to do before we can get back to town, because we're wrapping up our time here. You must all undertake a perilous journey to get back. Oh, okay. So, how this works... Oh, yeah, I like is this one. You need to choose theme of your parties. One is a trailblazer who scouts ahead. No, one is a trailblazer who tra tra makes the path. One is a scout that scouts ahead. And one is a quartermaster who makes sure you don't, like, eat yourself to death. Um, all of these are wisdom rolls. So just three of you make rolls and tell me what you're doing. Great. Um, All right. Does anyone have a positive wisdom? I have I, 13 wisdom with a plus one modifier. I have 12 with zero. Uh, eight minus one. Okay, at least one of us, uh, whether it's uh, Romero or I, will be bringing down the team. <laughs> <laughs> or I also have an eight minus one. All right, so who's going to throw blaze? He just rolls a six out of six, I think, right? Uh, no, it's a 2d6. 2d6 plus, plus wisdom. Modifier. Oh, oops. Yeah. 2d6 plus wisdom. Okay. That's the trail laser. Who's the scout? Uh, I'll be the scout. And who is the quartermaster? Oh, hell, I'll do it. Seven. All right. Okay, Um, you... The way back is... It takes way longer than it should have because you're all bad at this. Um, you you eat through all your rations, and by the time you get back to town, you're all dirty and bruised up, and like, really hungry, but you may... <laughs> and Romero is still talking about that goddamn rope. <laughs> yeah, you, you all... None of you are really all that good at being... just, like, wandering the wilderness. You get lost. You run from a bear. Carl's been pooping rocks for days. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It turned out the, those mushrooms that rubbed on me didn't do too good for me. I ate a couple, too, by accident. So, um. so you have returned triumphant to that city that you left in the first place when that guy bet you couldn't get this thing, and you got that thing. What are you going to do? Uh, we should probably I'm... go to the guy who told us to get the thing. And hey, rub his face in it. We got that thing! <laughs> it... All right, uh, remember... so you, you find him. Uh, in the same tavern you were in the first yeah. place. I'm just going to say that this guy's name is possibly NJ Vernon 88 and he said that we couldn't do this and if we did he'd eat his own dick. <laughs> well, if you Because that if that happened to me on YouTube, I'm just saying. If you so. go back to the uh, um to the first video, if you recall, we were given this job as a dare. Like I mm. bet you couldn't find anyone stupid enough to take this job. So yeah, so he already got his. He already won. And now we won. <laughs> so, so you, I mean, you get back, and he's like, "Oh wow, you did it! Wow, I thought you would like die <laughs> coming back." Uh, so yeah, hey, I'm, I, he buys you drinks, but you did not actually get like any reward from him for doing this because oh. you didn't really take care of that when you left. <laughs> but but we got a we got an idol. I mean, I'm sure you got we, the idol. Yes, we could sell that. I mean, we could pawn that and take the split the money or something. You can definitely hawk that. You'll be sitting pretty with that idol. Um, what do you call it? Well, you know what I think should happen is that we go, well, I got an even bigger dare for you, sir. And then it says the end with a question mark. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> oh, man. Um, I think that is that, works. Is, is that the, that's basically it, yeah. All right. Is that the end of our adventure? That's the end of this adventure, yeah. So let's, uh, what, you wanna, should we do a little wrap up kind of thing? I suppose. All right. Um, I'll start. Because why not? Uh, if you'd like. Um, 
Uh, this is so. This is my first experience ever with really with the tabletop thing, but uh, I had a lot of fun with it. Like, more, like a lot more than I thought I would because I don't know. It ne- tabletop never really appealed to me in my life, but um, yeah, that was pretty cool. Thanks, thanks a lot for introducing. I know it took a while, so thanks for introducing it to uh to me personally. Yeah, no problem. Likewise. Mm-hmm. I like doing this. I frankly, I winged like knives and the thing today. I didn't really prepare at all. Yeah, no, I, I called you on that like mushroom thing with that being the same golem. That was a pretty clear plot hole. I mean, <laughs> whatever. No, no. Well, it was like just kind of absorbing shit. Like, no, it, no, it, no. it was just going straight through rock and just like grabbing more rock onto it on the outside. But it, the in core, inner core was the magic. No, no. I, I meant more that like the mushroom society had time to come up with this sacrifice system, even though this happened well, over it, an hour. Like it rampaged through once. They're like, oh shit, no, we gotta do something. <laughs> that's that's, that's a right. plan. That's their first plan for everything, though, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah Can you yeah, say you yeah. would have done any differently? No, I wouldn't. I see. I, I, my trick is if I ever GM someday is to just rip off of a video game. Like, uh, <laughs> so, uh, you're all undead and mm-hmm. you're in Lordran. No, no, no. Okay. Uh, um, no, I, I, I'm, I'm just kidding. Of course, it, it, you did a really good job. I thought, especially considering like, um, you know, it was our first time and everything, mm-hmm. and Chip and uh, ironic, excuse me, Samuel and Carl were more experienced. Samuel, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Samuel, <laughs> whatever. <Damn it. laughs> Um, what do you call it? Would you guys ever want to do this again? Or I know it's kind of hard to schedule, but maybe I would be up for it. Yeah, sure. Sure. Uh, I'm always free. Most of. I always appreciate a chance to play rather than run the game, because I enjoy both, but I mean, it, if I only get to do one, that's the one I kind of crave more, you know? Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. Speaking of which, would you like to plug uh, sure. 13th Age again? Uh, since last time we played, we done even more um, work at making our uh, 13th Age Let's Play uh, more user-friendly. So there's now, uh, if you go to 13questions.tumblr.com, up on the top there's a thing that says Episodes. You click that, it brings you to every single episode and a uh, a description of what happened. So if you want to skip it, you get the gist and you can move on. Or Don't skip it, it's all really good. Uh, it gets pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Well, maybe skip the like the very like original. Skip the like, first three weeks, prequels. and uh, yeah, yeah. When when Medibot joins, then it gets pretty good. <laughs> well, that's when anything is really yeah. good. So yeah. Uh, also, I don't know. This doesn't mean much, but I'm gonna brag about it. Uh, our thread on SA went gold, so that's nice. Woo! Hey, yeah. very nice. Yeah. Congratulations. Now in LP too, we have one of the highest thresholds. Actually, we do. It takes it takes, a it takes it fifty takes... votes. I think even I think. Yeah, I think it's actually 75, or is it 50? Uh, it showed up at, like, 50, so... Okay, then. Well. Hell if I know. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's up to the admins, but, um... Yep. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, does anybody else have anything they want to plug? Because I do, but go ahead. I look Olivia forward to Bohan's spinoff thoughts. adventures. <laughs> yeah. I, I look forward to uh, Carl's spinoff romance novels. Well, is yeah. <laughs> I mean, yo, novels, there'll, there'll be a game. Uh, it's a whole <laughs> franchise. Nice. No, I just remember that Carl is actually a halfling, but he's that short. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, he's just a human. He's just a short man and round. He wobbles, he but he does not fall down. Nervous. That's that's his superpower. <laughs> mm-hmm. I, I don't, uh, Diabetes, you didn't give your last thoughts on this. What do you think? I would say they pretty much mirror what Slow Beef said. I've never played it before myself, but uh, I found it very easy to get to, especially when we first started, when I came from doing some errands, and, what, like 10, 15 minutes later, I was rolling shit and casting spells. Very easy to get into, so I recommend it for anybody who is Here's a question. Uh, curious about it. How open mm-hmm. would anyone here be to, say, other sorts of games, not Dungeon World or not even necessarily was- Apocalypse World-based? Or... I was actually just thinking. I was just actually thinking that uh, honestly, like even like if you think maybe we could try like different games and such. Or, and, and yeah, like, like... Uh, something with a completely different setting. Say, I don't know, uh, a sci-fi game or a uh, yeah. modern day whatever. Yeah, I'm down. I'd like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Variety is the spice. I'd like to know life. what it's like to play a slow beef moderating let's play. <laughs> I gotta say though, I am not good at DMing anything but this. I don't do good at 
I mean, I planning encounters. <laughs> Guess, Maybe you could play with us this yeah, time. As, as yeah, as long as I get to play something once in a while, I'm totally good with DMing. I do it all the time. Check out Let's Play the 13th Age. People say I do a good job. Uh, <laughs> do a good job. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, I guess that's it. All right. Cool. Yeah. Thank you all for playing. I had fun. Right, folks. Yeah, definitely. Thanks. Thank you for thanks. hosting. Thank, yeah. Yeah. And th- See you all later. And thank all of you for listening. Hooray. Mm-hmm. Hooray. Hooray.